You, you then moved on to Benfica and you, you played under uh, the special one, Jose Mourinho. How, how was how was that experience? It was a very short experience because uh, Mourinho took over from uh, Jupp Hankis. He got sacked very, I think, after after five games in the in the in the season. Then Mourinho took over, but uh, in the meantime there were elections. And as you know, in the, in Spain, Portugal, uh, Turkey, uh, you have presidents, uh, you have socios that that uh, the members who who can vote. So there was a challenger who promised uh, a new striker. Jardel was the new play, new striker. Uh, uh, Roger was a Brazilian midfielder, um, and he promised Tony was a former Benfica player as a coach. So that guy that won the elections. So Jose was was just there, uh, I think two and a half months, where the new president brought in his coach. So then uh, Mourinho went to Leria. But in the two months that I worked with him, I had a fantastic relationship with him. I really enjoyed uh, working with him, and of course, I didn't see him going all the way like he did, you know. But one thing, what I've heard afterwards from from other players who worked with with him, uh, and what is also my experience, is that uh, people management was fantastic, it was unbelievable. Yeah. You know, he he was he was good with his languages. You know, so every single player almost, you know, he he could. Uh, although it wasn't that difficult in Portugal because he is Portuguese, but uh, he could he could touch he could touch them. How important is that, Pierre? Like you know, in terms, I mean, you've you've been in a few different countries now as well yourself. Like to be able to you know get that relationship, that man management side of it. You know, it's an art. You know, it's like in, in terms of having the the, the different languages that uh, that Jose Mourinho has got, um, how how important do you feel as if that has has helped him along the way? I think a lot uh, because I think uh, all the other parts of coaching you can learn. Everybody can learn. You pick somebody from the street, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you teach him the four three three. Uh, 442, uh, 352, all these systems, you study, you study, you study, you study, and, and you know what the advantage, advantages are if you play against a 442 four with a 433 three and the disadvantages, all these kind of things. That the study material. But what you don't get when you're doing these courses is that men management, that people management. And and somebody can grab, uh, can put a, his, his arm around your shoulder, Chris, and, and you feel like ice because it's not him. You know, it's it's he thinks that it's a good thing to, to work that way. But you also worked with managers where you felt immediately like, hey, this is, he, he, he meant it, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I think that is that is much more important than than playing a four four two or four three three. But the thing is that these days uh, it's a hell of a job because the squads are no no longer twenty players. The squads are are forty players, and 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 that is difficult. That is difficult because uh, with twenty, uh, the ones who were out of the squad, they were still thinking like okay maybe i can get in one day but with 40 the 30 till 40 they know they have no chance so they don't really care anymore of the lust of appetite uh for the game pierre after you left benfica you joined feyenoord back in 2003 you knocked my old team rangers out of the uefa cup how was that it was a cracking tie Snoddy's all happy there. It was, but it was, uh, yeah, but I can imagine that because I was like that as well. Because uh, you talked before about the frustration, uh, uh, not being able uh, 
to um, to win the title in, in Scotland. Um, for me, that was uh, my biggest revenge, and uh, yeah, that felt great because we were traveling to Glasgow. Uh, Rangers had a fantastic team with really with with good good players, some good Dutch guys. Uh, Neil McCann was playing up front with Michael Moss, Ronald de Boer, Arthur Newman, Amor Russo, uh, Vitma was playing, uh, Barry Ferguson was playing in the midfield. So they, 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 had, a, they had a good side and, and we were really the underdogs. And, but when we played them at Ibrox and, and Rangers eagerized in the last minute, uh, scoring a penalty then then we felt hey maybe maybe we can uh, can realize a, a massive uh, surprise here and then in the second game uh, McCann scored very soon and then I had two free kicks actually two identical free kicks where uh, there was a little bit too much panic in the Rangers team for that free kick, for these free kicks because they were not I had scored much better free kicks than these two but because of the fear and the panic uh, the, the Amoruso want, wanted to go uh, at the last moment to stand on the goal line uh, while I, I waited my run up because I don't want that and if he stands on the goal line then I ask my players to stand in front of close uh, uh, just on, on two, three meters uh, uh, from the goal line uh, that he cannot see anything. So then he went back. Then I kicked the ball. I think close could have done more. Uh, but even with the second free kick, uh, the guys in the wall were not the bravest. Because if you look at the pictures where uh, I hit the ball and, and you look at the guys and I make fun with with, uh, with the disguise, the Newman and the Boer, because they were standing there, and and really, if you, it's horrible because they were like, <laughs> like this. They did, they did, they did. If they had jumped, I'm sure both of the free kicks would not have gone in. Was that something that you practiced a lot, your free kicks? Because you scored some unbelievable yeah. goals over the years. Like, what, what was yeah. in terms of your practicing every day? Uh, more or less yes yeah but you know it's it's uh, a bit different when when uh, you do you practice free kicks because for strikers finishing is is heaven you know that's what you want to do all the time so uh, when the training is finished okay then some crosses and then take some balls uh, put the wall up and, and then spend 15 20 minutes uh, Taking free kicks, you know, it doesn't really well, cost you energy. Yeah. It's 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 fun. Well, I believe I believe that when you were in Glasgow with the final team, you had a wee trip to Saty Sings as well. Yeah, yeah, after the after the game. How was that? Uh, no, it was no. Actually, Saty came to the hotel because the food in our hotel was rubbish. You know, on the on the night before the game, it was horrible. So I said to the coach, I said, coach. This is terrible, you know. When tomorrow we play a game, after the game we go straight back uh, to the hotel, and then we have we have something to eat. But if it's like the same standard as it is today, you know, uh, it's no good. So I said, I know somebody here in the Glasgow restaurant, fantastic curries, and he, he he was a bit afraid to say it's okay. He said, if we have a good result. Then you're allowed, you know. <laughs> so we got the we got a we got away with a one all draw. So, but that yeah, that year yeah, you, you obviously you won the you won the cup you won the UEFA cup and you're um, at home firing all the cup. How special was that to, to win it there when you beat Borussia Dortmund? I think because Dortmund uh, became champions of Germany as well. Uh, I think if we had played that final in any other stadium around the world we would have lost but everything was was so common for us because we were allowed to sit in our own dressing room uh, we went to the same hotel 
uh, as we as we we did in the previous matches for these uh, for the UEFA Cup, you know. So we felt in the stadium filled with fifty thousand, where uh, they had forty five thousand. They had divided uh, the tickets in three: one third Dortmund, one third uh, Feyenoord, and one third for the sponsors. But all these sponsors, they are giving tickets to to the Dutch uh, people, the Dutch relations. So, yeah, we, we play the home game, and and uh, we were lucky that that uh, the penalty was given, and and Jurgen Koller was giving a red card, showing the red card, because I just watched, or oh, not just, but a couple of weeks ago, the game was shown uh, again. For 90 minutes on television, and I didn't know that we played that bad against against 11 uh, against 10 men, and in the second half we were under pressure most of the most of the time playing against 10 of Dortmund. So we were lucky. See, well, um, a couple, well, last week I think we put a poll out like what was the best stadium um, with the lockdown tactics. We put it out on our social media platforms. But when I think about it, you've played in Glasgow. You played in Turkey. You mentioned there in Holland, the fifty thousand passionate fans at the final. What's what's been your best atmosphere that you have played? In? Best atmosphere. Um, best atmosphere. The most violent atmosphere I know. That <laughs> <laughs> that is that is definitely the Glasgow Derby, uh, and that is because you understand what they are shouting, what they are singing. So if somebody is swearing at you in Turkish and you don't speak Turkish, it doesn't hurt Well, you. I'm going to tell you something. You would be lying because I was there for six months and I nearly knew every swear word in Turkey. I knew nothing else, but I knew all the swear words and I bet you you were the same. You knew, know, food, but, you knew on the food menu as well. I definitely knew them. <laughs> <laughs> it was Sati Sings every night in Turkey. <laughs> no, but, 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 the, but the language is, is, is uh, it's, it's a nightmare, you know, to, to learn. And, and of course, you, you, I knew some swear words, but uh, that was it. And, and uh, I never felt uh, really offended in, in, in Turkey, although I probably, uh, they probably uh, offended me a lot, but they didn't feel like that. And in, in Portugal, it was, a, it was a bit the same. You had some great times with the national team, but tell us about 1998. Um, you obviously lost to, to Brazil in the semi-finals, but what a tournament was for, for um, the Netherlands as a country. Yeah, we, we, I must say that we had a, a very talented squad as well. Uh, we had good players, uh, and and we left Holland to France to become world champion. That was our aim, and of course, uh, you set yourself, uh, you put challenges for yourself, but but sometimes it's not realistic. But as a group, we said we want to go there, and and we think we are that strong. We think that we can. Uh, become world champion and and we started off we struggled a bit against belgium then second game we beat uh, south korea uh, with this uh, mexico we drew and and come on you've got to mention it. who scored against south korea uh over much but i think you you're talking about Michael. <laughs> I can't believe a goal scorer has not. He's missed the opportunity to see my goal against South Korea. <laughs> no, uh, I was. You interrupted me. I was coming back on that later on. But this is much, this is much better than you are mentioning. No, uh, so we we uh, we played Yugoslavia. Uh, we we were lucky. Berkham was lucky not to. Uh, to be sent off because he, he stamped uh, one one guy and uh, they missed a the penalty as well uh, then we played argentina in in marseille what was unbelievable tie uh, I, I never forget that i was i had to do a warm-up 
because we were it was one all and and all the players had to do or some players had to do their warm up and had to do it behind the, the goal of at that time uh, Van der Sar but it was full of jerseys from Argentina but all blonde girls I never seen any, anything like that I was just doing my stretching, stretching, stretching. And then I heard the crowd like, whoa. And then I turned around and then I saw 100 meters further on, I saw Burkamp uh, scoring that crazy goal, uh, that 2 1 in the, in, the, in the dying seconds. But that was, that was a fantastic game. And then we played the semis against Brazil, where uh, Ronaldo scored. Uh, Clive had equalized just be, uh, before the end of the game, and then I was pulled down in the last last 30 seconds of the game. And we had a, a referee from uh, uh, Emirates, and he gave he, he gave me a yellow card for diving. I mean, I got the, the photo still on my on my uh, mobile because people keep asking, ah, "What well, 98 was it a penalty? Was it?" I say yes. Are you sure? And then I showed the picture, and there's yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but people say, yeah, what if? I say, yeah, okay, what if we probably would have reached the final? But I must say, the France, the French team was unbelievable uh, in in the final against uh, against Brazil. Well, everybody, everybody knows the stories. So, you know, you see on the pitch now. But who was your who was your roommate during that World Cup? Arthur. Arthur, uh, Arthur Newman, and, and uh, Arthur surprised me a lot of times. He, uh, for example, we we stayed in Monaco in fantastic five star plus hotel, and and we're going to bed. Arthur on his bed, I'm going on my bed, and and then all of a sudden, after five minutes, he gets out of his bed. And he takes his. We were wearing black uh, track suits, and he he takes a black uh, track suit and he puts it in front of the door because he could not <laughs> sleep when when the light from the hallway gets into his room. So I said, "Okay, Arthur." Then five minutes later, he gets out of bed again, goes to the TV, press that button because he could not stand that red standby light. So. <laughs> Yeah, these crazy things. Then the next morning, he's going to the bathroom, but there is a whole pot with towels from his bed, getting out of bed, all all the towels tun, 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 to the to the bathroom. So I said, "What? What are you doing?" Yeah, no, no, no. I I I I. I I think it's a kind of dirty to step in my uh, bare feet on the on the carpet. <laughs> so he, he had made his own his own road. His own path. <laughs> a wee, yeah, but yeah, to be yeah. fair, a wee buddy also told me as well though that he was pissed on you because he he was going to sign for Rangers that year as well, and, he, and yeah, yeah. just after that he was trying to get you for to sign for Rangers as well. I was on the phone with Advocat uh, during that tournament uh, because Atu had just signed, and. Uh, Dick was uh, going to be the manager. So then Dick called me, he said, ah, come on, uh, uh, come to uh, come to Rangers. I said, oh, Dick, you don't know what it's like. You know, you have no clue. If you say this, then you don't have a clue. Then uh, I met him a couple of, a couple of years ago. Uh, after that moment uh, at Celtic Park, uh, when I went to see uh, Celtic Rangers, so then he said, uh, "I understand uh, why you said no. I understand completely." You know. But oh, Snoddy, indeed, he, Snoddy, uh, Snoddy, here we go. He, he's he said it that Arthur was always surprising him. He was always he was always up to something. So, at the lockdown tactics, once again, Pierre, myself, Robert. Was managed to surprise you. Here he comes. Here comes your friend. <laughs> 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 
Put your hands up for Pierre. Put your hands up for Pierre. <laughs> I, I cannot see his eyes. I can only see his <laughs> neck and his mouth. I cannot see his eyes. <laughs> oh, man, I've been listening to your conversation for 40 minutes and I think, oh, no, 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 not again, not again. <laughs> this, this is unbelievable because this guy is so famous in Holland because he's the only person in Holland where if you put a parrot on his shoulder, he falls off. <laughs> <laughs> They were all they were all sleeping. I still remember when we played with the old uh internationals a tournament in Moscow and everybody was wearing the orange jersey and they were waiting in the dressing room until I walked in. I think why is everybody staring at me? And then all of a sudden I could see my jersey hanging on the coat hanger and I cut my sleeves off so you could see my, my <laughs> I was wearing my orange jersey like this, no sleeves on it. <laughs> but but, but he, he he didn't care because he's got biceps like this size, you know. Yeah, unbelievable. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, yeah, yeah. Popeye. Yeah, he tells <laughs> us. He tells us. He tells us all the time he doesn't go to the gym. Ah, uh, right. Steroids. Hey, steroids. That's what I learned from you. That's what I learned from you. Oh, <laughs> No, but we've got the, we've got the two years on. How how good was it to be part of that, um, you know, World Cup team in, in '98? And how close did you come? Yeah, I was just listening to Pierre's story, and uh, now he was spot on. Uh, we were roommates for uh, for seven weeks, nearly seven weeks, but we knew each other already from the, the national team under twenty one, and uh, we always got on really well with each other. Uh, so it's nice that you share the room with someone you know. You can always uh, have fun with, and of course, I sometimes drove him crazy when he just said that all the stories in the bathroom. <laughs> but uh, no, we, we 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 had a great time there. Uh, for seven weeks, it's quite long when you're together, but we had a, a great group. We had like uh, Mark Overmars, Jaap Stam, uh, Wim Jong, uh, also uh, off the park. Sometimes we we went out. You still remember that uh, the trip on the jet skis? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where I almost broke Frank de Boer's leg. I think it was Mark Overmars, probably, but I think it was. But yeah. uh, no, it, it, it was a great experience. And uh, I think it was also one of the highlights of my career, the World Cup there. And, and what just Pierre mentioned early on, I think we also had a feeling with the squad we had that we could become uh, the world champion. And unfortunately, against uh, Brazil, uh, I think we actually deserved the penalty, Pierre, when, when we were pulled down to the ground. Yeah. If you see it back, then yeah, we deserve the penalty, and yeah, that could have made a difference. But what I said for seven weeks, we had a we had a we had a great time there. Fantastic, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's it's also funny that uh, we shared a room together, and and uh, Artu was a regular in the first eleven, but if there was one player who was definitely not a regular in the first eleven, then it was me. So you you having two guys in one room where. <laughs> Uh, the, the 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 vision is 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 a bit different, you know. He was more stressed in a way, like focusing on the games, and my focus all became in a game when the other team was leading. Then I thought, hey, this could be a moment that the coach is going to call me for the, for a warm up, you know. So I was much more relaxed than uh, than Arthur because. Atu was just focusing focusing on his game and and I was just focusing on on maybe five maybe ten maybe ten minutes uh, 15 minutes maybe zero minutes know that you were going to be used for five ten minutes was it was it hard for you that that feeling no not at all not at all because uh, first of all I, I felt really proud you know to be amongst these these top players uh, and and uh, second of all, if I would have been the head coach, I would not have picked myself in the first eleven uh, anyway. You know, so <laughs> so that, that was it was easy to easy to accept, and and I was I was happy with my role and and uh, yeah, doing a job if if being asked, and if not, no problem. I yeah. at least I always had a lot of fun with the guys and and uh that that is what what helps as well you know when you have a 
uh, a bad squad with characters, then these kind of uh, roles are probably uh, not as nice anymore. But but uh, with this squad, we had so much fun. You know, it's never a dull moment. See on that, and I mean, I've, I've spoke to Arthur a couple of times about it, but it was always something that was labelled at the national team, the Holland national team in the Netherlands, that, you know, there was egos, there was problems. Look, was that annoying for you as having to listen to people speak about it? Or, or was there problems in within the dressing room? No, in, in 98, we, we didn't have a particular problem. I think the problem, uh, the last problem that they had was just in 96, where Davids was having a fallout with with the hitting but David was just brought back into the national team by hitting uh, just before the uh, before the tournament so that was all cleared so i don't yeah, think uh, but also something to do with the problems uh, ajax had they took the problems from ajax to the national team and i still remember that we had a meeting with all the players together and then they spoke out that uh, yeah the frustration and it was all to do with the players from Ajax that, uh, yeah, were not actually happy also with the contracts and uh, that some players got paid more money and they took the written to uh, 96 and that actually yeah, caused trouble. What Pierre said, David was sent home. Uh, the whole tournament was like a farce. And then after that tournament, we sat down and we said, okay, we need to focus now on the World Cup in 98. And uh, I actually straight from the beginning, and what, what Pierre said earlier on, I think you scored then two goals against Wales, what you mentioned. Yeah. And that was just the start to the World Cup. And what he said, we had a great, yeah, a great team. So for some positions, we had like two, three players who could play that easily. Uh, so the competition was really hard. But uh, yeah, what Pierre just mentioned, some players, they ex uh, expect, accepted the role. They knew that they would start on the bench and would come on maybe as a substitute. And yeah, the World Cup '98 was great, and also Euro 2000 was great. We had a we had a great group, and everybody went on really well with each other. And it was on the park and off the park. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed both tournaments. And and but I said World Cup in '98 was fantastic when we stayed there in Monaco for a, for a couple of weeks. Well, I'm going to get it in before Robert says it because he will say ten. I'm going to say. Can Celtic get nine and a half in a row? I will range or stop it after. <laughs> no chance. Ten, I, Pierre, I, ten, mate. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no. That was quite funny what Pierre said earlier on because yeah, you can imagine uh, in 98 when we went to the World Cup, I just signed for uh, for Rangers and I also said to Pierre, what, what is it like to be involved in an old firm? And I still remember that he, he said to me, Arthur, he said, we can talk about it for an hour, two hours, but he said, I'm not going to tell you. He said, you have to experience yourself. I said, but Pierre, I said, I signed for Rangers. I don't know what to expect. He said, once when you play your first old firm game, you really understand what I'm talking about. And I have to admit, he was actually spot on because the moment when you actually come out of the dressing room, when you're there at Ibrox or Park Head, you look around you, the atmosphere is unbelievable. And it's the best atmosphere I've ever experienced. It is, it is yeah, something special. And then you realize what it means to play either for Celtic or Rangers because for 90 minutes, it's like, fantastic the adrenaline is pumping through your body and it means so much for the supporters and uh and i have to admit my first game i played against celtic unfortunately we lost them 5-1 i think uh, scott wilson was sent off with a red card after 20 minutes but i was like whoa what's happening here i just came back from the world cup but the atmosphere in an old firm is completely different and uh yeah you see the rivalry is always there uh, it's all about winning trophies and I hope this year that Rangers actually can uh, can win the league. They did really well before the winter break. Uh, they beat Celtic uh, in Parkhead as well. But unfortunately, then after the break, uh, yeah, the results were not that good. But I think when the belief is there, and I think they have a good manager with Steven Gerrard, yeah, the fighting spirit back in the team, and also the belief of the players that uh, yeah, they can make it Celtic really difficult again this year. Arthur, see, see, Pierre touched on it earlier, and when obviously Chris asked him, he says, you know. When obviously they, they lost the league, uh, only losing uh, one game, and, and the, what he touched on there was having that one in experience. Do you feel, you know, after the, when they went into the uh, Christmas, the winter break, you know, R Rangers were flying, um, but Celtic, you know, they've won eight previous titles at that point, and they had that one in experience that Pierre just spoke about. Do you think that was vital this season because Celtic had that? They knew, 
okay, we are halfway, let's regroup and come back stronger because the wheels came off for Rangers. Yeah, that, that that's important because uh, yeah, the pressure is on on, on races because yeah, they they want to win trophies again and uh, they want to win the league because it's already many years ago. And uh, what you just actually pointed there before the break, it was fantastic. I saw the that old firm game as well, Parkhead when we uh, when we beat Celtic, and then I thought, oh yeah, you could see the the the, the confidence by the players, uh, the supporters. And then it's quite frustrating what you just said. You have a wee break and then you pick it up in January. And then all of a sudden, uh, maybe the pressure is, is on the, the, the Rangers uh, squad. And they feel it maybe because all of a sudden they drop points against Haas, they drop points against Dundee and Celtic. They were actually winning the games again. And then before you knew, three, four weeks later, whoop, they were eight points ahead. And and maybe that has something to do that uh, the Celtic team, the, yeah, they won trophies before and they probably has the, they, they had the confidence again by winning uh, winning the league. But it was frustrating because, what I said before, the winter break, they played, they played really well. Right, that's enough, Pierre. We all know what Arthur's like. We could keep him, we could be here for three, four hours with him because he won't shut up. So we need to get rid of him. We need to finish this. But Arthur, thank you very much for, for coming on and surprising yeah. Pierre once again. Thanks, Perfect. Arthur. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Pierre, we, um, you know, he, he, he says about your, you know, your, your top 11. Um, any formation? Um, what's your what's your best five aside team? We don't want to keep you on for too long. But what's your what's your best? If you had to choose five aside, you can choose yourself. Um, but you played with many top strikers as well. But what's what's Pierre Van Hoydok's best um, five aside team? Uh, from the players I played at played with at club level. Any level. Any level. That that. Uh... Uh, I would say Burkamp, um, uh, Alex de Souza. Uh, I played with that Fenerbahce, Brazilian guy. Um, uh, Ronald, Ronald de Boer. Well, um, this is going to get interesting. Is Frank getting left out? He's out. He's out. I think. I think he missed the cut. He missed the cut. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you do know Ronald's head yeah. has just went from this to this size now because <laughs> he's gone over his brother. <laughs> um, who else? Uh, I would say Seedorf, Terence, and uh, Clivert. Clive it. Yeah. No, no goalkeeper. Just yeah. all out attack. That no team keeper. doesn't need a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Van der Sar, uh, just stay in the house, son. Yeah, you're, not, uh, you're not wanted. Uh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, Van der Sar. Van der Sar. Van but he can play okay, as well. Right, she can play. So, Pierre, the, the, the podcast is based around mental health as, as, as well. Um, you know, for, for in Holland um, and here in the UK as well, what message would you give to anyone? Who might be struggling with with uh, with mental health issues right now? No, not not to keep it for you for yourself only. You know, share it, uh, and and uh, then then you can probably uh, find people that that can help you uh, in this in this matter. And and I also understand, you know, com- coming from the football business, that I'm what I'm saying now. Uh, is for a player is is still very tricky because uh, you're you're open you you're open yourself but you're showing you you showing a weak, a weak side of you and and for coaches if they have to choose between two similar players and one had knocked on his door and as explained is mental issues and the other hasn't i think for when a crucial final is coming up i think he picks the other one unfortunately but that is still what it is in 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 football side and and uh, we have seen um, uh, the guy the portuguese guy from uh, everton who broke his leg unfortunately gomez gomez he when he was in barcelona he he made it public that he had uh, uh, yeah, mental mental issues. Uh, 
he's one of the few actually that came out. Uh, I played with Robert Enke, uh, the goalkeeper, goalkeeper, German goalkeeper who, who killed himself. Uh, I played twice with him, uh, one year at Befica and, and uh, three, three or four weeks in uh, in Fenerbahce. And I was I was a close friend of him, but he never uh, said anything about it, uh, and and I didn't notice anything, you know, because I was not even I was also not looking at him, you know, like like hey, uh, is there something wrong? He was he was a ordinary guy, you know, and 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 then uh, you find out later on that he he had these issues, uh, but but therefore. Uh, Especially ordinary people, I would say, speak, 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 speak. Because you 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 will get support, and and uh, uh, on the football side, it's. I think we all know that that it is a bit the way that I, uh, as I just mentioned, unfortunately, you know that, that. Do you feel as if we have to get away from that though? Of course, of course. But as long as as we still believe that he that he he is the coach will pick the other one, yeah, yeah. you know, then it still doesn't make sense. But uh, of course, uh, I'm, I, w- I would be very happy to see one day that coach picking the guy. Who knocked on his door and 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 was speaking uh, to him about his his uh, uh, mental issues? Well, see see on that. Like me and Robert always we always speak about it here as well. Do you feel as if there is a there's more of an educational part to be learned from people? Um, you know, as you say, there like from the coach's point of view or the manager's point of view that that they need to understand that some people might be struggling. So there is more of an educational part. Um, the other side yeah. of it to understand what people are going through as well. Do you feel as if that oh, and football needs to change? Of course, because the, the thing is, we have seen uh, and heard these coaches so many times talking about a player like, ah, he cannot handle the pressure, you know, or when the tension is high, he's never there, you know, all these kind of things. And uh, they look at it as, a, as it is a kind of... Uh, a disqualification for the player, like like uh, a lack of of a certain quality, and and they immediately put these players aside, uh, and and I think that 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 not that should not be the case. Yeah, well, Pierre, it's been fantastic talking to you, but I think Robert will still want to know. He needs he needs answers. To this. I mean, Arthur said that Rangers are going to stop it. Is, is, is that nine and, a, nine and a half in a row going to happen? Chris, I can only say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, your hands were cut off there as well, so that, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, probably by, about, that's probably, by about, by that's probably about nine, but it's been fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fantastic um, you know, hearing your stories from the past and, and bringing it back up to date as well. So you know, thank you very much for coming on. We've, uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, take care. Okay, pleasure, guys. All the best. Thank you, Pia. Yes, thank, 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 thank you, Thank you. Thank you. You'd have been buzzing with some of these stories there, Snoddy, eh? Boy, the incredible, mate. Took me way back to being, you know, a young uh, a young lad and, and 25 years ago when he played with Celtic. Um, and some of his stories um, were incredible. Um, he spoke he spoke really well um, regarding Celtic international level, Forest. Um, you know, I, I loved it. And it was great to, yeah, to get the Celtic side on. Um, this is the podcast, boy, the way you see, you know, the big names, the great stories and, you know, the banter. And, you know, we touch a lot and in depth with, with mental health. So um, tune in over the next few weeks. We have got some some great names coming up. You'll be excited with them. But make sure you do subscribe to uh, all of our um, channels, Spotify, Podbean, and subscribe to our YouTube channel because that is very important to us. Um, Stay safe, um, tune in, and thanks very much for listening again. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.